<laughs> What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Tool Time. In this video we'll be looking at the pucker and bloat tools in Adobe Illustrator. And if you want to follow along then you can download a free template file for this lesson from the description below. Okay, I'm going to pass over to our lead designer Rory who will take you through the process. Thanks Ross. So jumping straight into our template file, we can find the pucker and bloat tools over on the left hand side and they sit underneath the width tool within our left hand toolbar. So if I click and hold on the width tool, you'll see the first tool in the list is the pucker tool. So I'm going to select that first and we have our examples of what we can do with these tools on the left of this document and some objects on the right that we are going to use these tools on. So first and foremost, let's start with this blue square. Now before I do anything, we can double click on these tools to get up some more options where we can set things like the brush size. We can also change the angle at which this is working and things like the intensity, which is just going to adjust how quickly and dramatically this effect is going to be applied. We also have things like detail and simplify, which basically just means it's either going to smooth out the paths or make them more detailed depending on the settings we choose. So I'm just going to leave these settings as they are for now and click OK. And I can simply use this by clicking and dragging through an object and the longer I hold down or the more I move the mouse, it's going to have a greater effect on the object itself. But where this tool is more useful is if we just hold it in one position. You can see See I can snap to the center point of this square and if I simply click and hold just a little bit you can see it's essentially pulling in the edges of this object to the center. So moving down to this circle now what I can also do is adjust the brush size on the fly by holding option or alt on a PC. I can simply click and drag. Dragging left or right is going to adjust the brush width and up and down the brush height. If I hold shift at the same time if we have this already set to a circle it's just going to scale up proportionately as a circle instead. So I can also use this tool by clicking outside of an object. So in this example I'll try and position this as centrally as I can to this circle and with the brush overlapping the circle slightly if I now click and hold you can see it's actually going to pull the bottom of this circle towards the center point of the brush. So although on the other example it was contracting the object to the center of the brush we can essentially reverse this by positioning the brush on the outside of an object. So that's another use of this tool. But moving on to the bloat tool, this is essentially the opposite of the pucker tool. So again, I can double click into this and we have some settings here. Although I'm going to leave all of this as is for this example, click OK. I can adjust the brush size on the fly. So I'm going to hold shift and option here. And I'm going to make this slightly larger than the square here. Again, I'll use my smart guides to align this to the center of this square and if I click this is doing the opposite it's actually pushing the edges of this square out the way. The same thing goes for positioning this on the outside of an object so again I'll make this brush slightly smaller in this case and we need to make sure we're slightly overlapping with the object that we want to have this affecting. Again I'm just going to click and you can see this is actually pushing the path away from the brush that we have here. So that's it for an overview of the pucker and bloat tools in Adobe Illustrator. If you want to learn more about graphic design, we've created a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers, which saves you the hassle of having to figure it all out for yourself. We'll be showing you how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, creative thinking and how to spark creativity, what good composition is and how you can achieve it in your designs, how to pick the right colors for your designs and how to pick the right typefaces for your projects. So if you are serious about leveling up your design skills, then make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information others charge you for. And ours is free. The link is in the description. You're not going to want to miss it. I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.